Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Emily here and today I'm going to be talking to you all about resin printing. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about the Anycubic Mono M7 Pro. I've had this printer for about a month now, so I thought it was a good time to make this video and talk about just that. Before this printer, I was using a much older Anycubic printer, and it was fine, but it wasn't really doing everything I wanted it to do quality-wise, and maybe it was worth upgrading to something newer. So Anycubic sent me their Photon Mono M7 Pro to test out, and this video is going to be all about my sort of one-month impressions from a hobbyist perspective. Perspective. I'm going to show you guys some projects that I've done with it so far. For example, I actually have a few here. Um, I'll go more in depth with these in a second. This video is sponsored by Anycubic, so thank you so much to Anycubic for supporting my channel. This printer was provided to me for free to test out. However, Anycubic has given me full reign to give my complete, honest, genuine opinion on this printer. I do have the printer linked down in the description, but I do not make commission on any link clicks or sales, nothing like that, and I would never try to convince you guys to spend your hard-earned money on something I didn't actually believe in. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so just to start out, let's talk about some of the specs of this machine. So the spec that everybody wants to know and probably the most important thing when determining the kind of quality you can get from your printer is the screen resolution. The screen in this printer is a 14K, 10.1 inch. Now that is going to be very fine detail along the XY axis. At this resolution, you're really not going to be able to see any pixels with the naked eye. So screen resolution is not only going to be important for aesthetic quality if you're doing like miniatures, but it can also be important from a mechanical point of view. If you're going to be using your printer to print parts with, for example, very small holes that might get clogged if the resolution is not fine enough. Next up is something I personally really care about because I'm constantly doing projects on a very short time crunch, um, and that is speed. I have been using high speed resin for all of my prints so far and it is a game changer. I'm gonna show you guys more about the slicing software in just a minute, but just real quick, I'm gonna show you guys some examples of some STL models and how long it's gonna to take to print them. So this model of R2-D2 is going to take 57 minutes to print with the high speed resin. It's a height of 74 millimeters along the Z axis, so it's a pretty good size model. And just to show you another one, um, this is a model for a raven skull. It's 90 millimeters tall and it's going to take about one hour and nine minutes to print. So for me, coming from, like I said, a much older Anycubic printer, um, that speed is kind of insane. And I am actually going to go through the printing process for the Raven Skull so you can see a print from slicing to finished product. So let's hop on over to the workshop and do that now. All right, so I just opened up the model in Photon Workshop, which is the slicing software. I'm actually going to make two different sizes of these. I'm doing sort of a druid witch costume for the Ren Fair, so I thought this would be a good test print anyways. So once you have them oriented how you want, I'm gonna go over here and click supports. So I've found that the auto supports are actually really good. I have not had any issues with prints failing due to the way it wants to print the supports. But if you want, you can click here and manually add in more or remove some. And so for this whole plate, it's gonna take one hour and 27 minutes to print, as you can see here using the high speed resin. And, and this printer does have Wi-Fi capability, so I can just send it right over from my computer. So once the print is done and you're taking the plate off of the machine, you really wanna make sure that the resin doesn't drip off the plate and onto any part of the machine or the screen. So what I do is just lift it off and then carefully rotate it and let it drip off of one corner. And then I just paper towel underneath and bring it to my work surface. The high speed resin is a little bit thinner than standard resin as you can see. So you're gonna to have to take extra care to not let anything drip. So as you can see, after it's done washing and curing, these are really nice high quality prints. 
I believe that this model was a scan of an actual raven skull. So you can see like even all of the little pinholes and bone texture. This is beautiful. All right, so let me walk you through some of the other projects that I've done with this so far. So I've been obsessed with House of the Dragon lately with the new season and everything. So I decided to make a Targaryen hairpin. This is the kind where you stick a pin through it and it kind of like holds it in your hair. I also made my own Deadpool and Wolverine friendship necklaces that we saw in the movie posters and some theaters are, you know, giving them out now. The text on these friendship necklaces is tiny and it came out really clear and really sharp. And honestly, I was just impressed that it could do that kind of detail on such a small thing. Another thing I did was something that I've been wanting to try for a while, which is this resin printed chain mail. So this is the file from Willow Creative. Um, she is awesome, first of all, and is just such a constant source of inspiration for the community. I actually put this file out for completely free. Um, I'll put the link down in the description as well if you want to do it yourself. And this whole sheet only took nine minutes to print. Okay, so let's talk about my overall pros and cons um, that I've noticed after one month of use. Pros, very easy to set up. This was super fast. Even like connecting it to the Wi-Fi and to Photon Workshop was super quick. The prints, as you saw, are obviously very high quality. I think that the air filter system is a great inclusion. At least with the default profile in Photon Workshop, it's super easy to remove the prints from the plate as well as remove the supports. It's really fast and it's highly accurate. Now for some cons. So the number one thing that has been like really bothering me about this machine is that um, it has a standard kind of lift up, remove, place it somewhere lid system. With the size of the build plate and with the size of the lid, it can be quite hard not to accidentally touch the build plate when you're removing the lid. Um, and of course, if you touch the build plate with the lid, you get you know smears of resin on the inside and it's a pain to clean up. There's resin printers out there now that have the flip up lid instead of the lift off, which I personally think this printer could have really benefited from. Second, and this kind of, I guess, goes along with my first point about the lid. Um, this printer requires a lot of space. One, it's a pretty big machine in general, um, but two, because the lid is that lift off mechanism, you have to have at least that much space above the printer. So this isn't really something you're gonna be able to tuck away on a shelf. I have this in my resin printing closet and it has its own dedicated thing in the corner um, with room above it that I can get the lid off, no problem. But if you are somebody who has a pretty relatively small space for your resin printing, maybe this machine isn't the best option because there are resin printers out there that have the same build volume um, but do not have the lift off style lid. Okay, so closing thoughts. Overall, I think this is a brilliant printer. I think it's a great machine for cosplayers and for makers like me um, who want really detailed pieces for their costumes and props and also for people who, like me, speed matters a lot. It is a little bit pricey compared to some other resin printers currently on the market and a lot of this price is attributed to the screen as well as some of the other bells and whistles features that I mentioned earlier. But I will say that this whole experience has been super easy and super user-friendly. It's a fantastic printer, like period. So if you have a little extra money to spend on a machine, or if you're not happy with your current machine and you're looking to upgrade in quality and speed, the Photon Mono M7 Pro is an excellent, excellent choice. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I always love watching YouTube videos of other people's you know, thoughts on different machines that are coming out, especially if I'm considering purchasing it myself. So I hope that this was helpful to somebody out there. I would love if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel if you're not already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.